from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. I'm John Fenn from the American Folklife Center at the Library of Congress, and I'm here today with Ledward Capana, a uh, slack key tar guitar player, ukulele player, and <laughs> yeah. singer. Um, and we're going to chat a little bit about Hawaiian music, mm -hmm. culture, language, and get your background. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have fun. Yeah, we're going to have fun. So um, I know you talk a lot about family and learning how to play as a young child. I wonder if you could give us a brief uh, overview of, of growing up with all this music around you and yeah. how you picked up the guitar. Well, um, because living in California, we were so isolated from everything else. Uh, no electricity, you know, learn how to live the old style. Uh, we went fishing, we went hunting, you know, swimming. And besides all that, there's um, music. My dad, my mom, uncles and aunties, they all played music. So I was so fortunate just growing up every day, every day I hear music. and and. Back in those days, um, my family, no one reads music. You know, they, um, they play from the heart, you know, from within. Mm -hmm. So um, um, that's the way I learned how to play this music. Um, the only keys they would know it would be the major keys, like G, F, A, you know, anything after that would have been second F, second A, which I found out that, you know, A7 is second A, you know, C7 is second F, so, um, then, um, I had all my uncles, they all played music. Um, uncles and aunties, they all played slackies. Okay. So as I was growing up, I could see all the different style. So I, I learned by just um, by watching how they uh, fingered the keyboard and how they tuned. I remember, I remember all the tunings as I was growing up. So and which tuning do you use most often now? Um, I, I use mostly the, we call this the taro patch tuning. Um, what it, what it is, uh, the, uh, the standard tuning on the guitar, the first, this is the first string right here. Mm -hmm. So this would be an E. So what I did, I dropped that E down to a D, so it's a D now. The sound of the E would be here. So I went down to D, and this stays the same. This is a B string, stays the same right here. This is the G string, and then right here, the, um, the fourth string, it's a D, and then the fifth string from an A, I tuned it down to a um, G. And then the sixth string is like the first string. From an E, I went down to a D. So there's two Ds, I mean three Ds. One here, one there. This is the octave and the other one is, is right here. So, so there, that's all the D notes. And then you have the B. Then I have two G's, the third string and the fifth string. And when you strum against the whole, against the strings like this, is the is a G major chord on the standard okay. tone. On the standard tone, you have to hold a G like this. But I don't have to. I just go. And that's what's lucky. We we retune the guitar, so we call this the taro patch tuning. Okay. And what the, what, uh, the technique of playing this style is that the tom does all the um, bass notes. That's what the tom is doing. And then the, f uh, the, the finger does all the melody chords. So you have the bass going st steady, and, the, and then the finger is doing all the melody chords. You make it sound so easy. <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> so, so when you were younger and, and there was music all around you, yeah. did someone put a guitar into your hand and say, here, play, or did you pick one up on your own oh, well, out of inspiration? Um, when I was young, we couldn't touch the guitars. Oh, okay. We, all we could do is just watch them perf perf play, you know? Um, you know, living in California, we're so isolated from everything else. So we, we used to have parties that goes on for months. 
not weeks, in months, you know. And, and, and from the first house to the last house in Kalapana, we were all related. So everybody would share whatever we could bring. You know, we went fishing, some went hunting, and we all shared the food, and, and the parties keep on going. And so the only time we could touch the guitar is when they're all drunk. <laughs> you know, they're having fun. And after that, we don't, we don't touch it when they, okay. you know, because they don't want you to touch the guitar, because they don't want we, the guitar break, or, you know, so we don't touch it. We just, I just sit there and just observe what was happening, how, you know, how they tune the guitar, and I'm, all I'm doing is just listening. And uh, the trick is the ears have to be good <laughs> to, to know what mm -hmm. you're doing. Yeah, you have to really listen. And so you you started playing when you were four. Uh, when I was six years old, six I played ukulele. I started with oh, the ukulele. Okay. okay. Yeah, I started with the ukulele. Then, as the years went on, I started playing because we were getting older already. So when I was about eight eight years old, I could touch the guitar. Okay. Then I started playing, like you know, just strumming all the rhythm. Well, my dad and playing the music, we get to, and then my mom says, oh, they got good rhythm, you know, because we're listening, mm -hmm. how they, and we're playing it. And finally, the, we were able to play with them in, at parties or whatever. Okay. And then would, would, in, in that situation, would you learn by playing, or would, you, would, would an uncle or your dad sit down with you and teach you a song? Well, no. No. They, yeah, they didn't, teach, they didn't teach us. I had to learn just by watching okay. what they did and remember what they did. And that's how I learned, you know. Same like them, you know. Like I just, I just knew the major keys and the tuning. I remember all the tunings. And <laughs> my, my uncle used to be kind of one step ahead of us because he knew I wanted to learn how to play the guitar. So what he would do, because he knew every time he put the guitar down, I would grab the guitar so I don't forget, forget the fingerings. But not knowing that every time he put the guitar down, he always slacking another string that I don't, that I don't see, and he puts it there. <laughs> Keeping it on your toes. Yeah, huh? yeah, my toes. Until I finally found out what he was doing. So, because he puts it down there, he walks outside of the house, and he's outside listening, and he's having fun. Because in Kalapano, we don't have electricity, so we don't have no TV. So I was like the cartoon uh, actor <laughs> out there for him, and he's laughing. So finally, I caught on, because uh, the, the thing didn't sound. So I seen his finger like this. Sounds mm -hmm. good, yeah? Mm -hmm. So the next thing I know, he, he slacked this string so it wouldn't sound like this, it would sound like this. I said, something wrong with that string. Then I found out, I tuned it up, you know, it was so soft. And I said, oh, that's the, there's the note, you know, because mm -hmm. <laughs> my ears are good. Then I went like this. Uh, I knew what he was doing. I slacked another string on him. I put it down. <laughs> he caught on. He looked at me and he says, Oh, you're smart. Now I'm going to teach you. And when he says he's going to teach me, all he does is just play his guitar and just watch me, you know, and tell me watch what he's doing. Yeah. And what about the, the singing? You learned to sing from your mother? Yes, from my mom. And then um, um, the Leo Ki Ki, the, the high falsetto singing. Mm -hmm. I learned that from a, a gentleman back in 19, um, 1963, he came. Because by um, the seventh grade, we were playing music. I mean, me and my brother, we were just jamming. We were, we were, you know, we were playing like professional. Um, so that gentleman came and asked my dad if he could take us and play with him. So we were on the age and we, we played in a, in a nightclub that served liquor, so um, my dad and mom had to come there. We had to go on the child labor board. Mm -hmm. And that gentleman used to, used to sing all that high falsetto. Like the last song I did, mm -hmm. and that's the song he sang. And, and the, just watching what he, what he did, and I just, just came out natural. You know, like watching how they play music. I just listened to him, and, and it just came natural. And after that, I see every, all the guys singing like that, yeah. Beautiful, they call it falsetto. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I used to ask him, <laughs> I used to ask the gentleman, his name was David Chan, he, he's best on already. I used to ask David, how do, you, um, how do you sing high like that? He said, well, when I was a baby, yeah, he said, I used to cry a lot. Oh yeah, I said, yeah, I used to scream and cry, but he was just joking. 
It seems like humor is a big part of. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm like this. I always, always, <laughs> always having fun. <laughs> um, so <laughs> you were playing with your brother at a young age. Yeah. And then you two started a group. Yeah. Right? Um, when, 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 when did Hui Ohana start? Hui Ohana started in 1972. Okay. Our first CD we did in Waikiki. We played at, at a at a club called Chuck Salas. And 19, uh, 1972, we made our first uh, album. It was called Young Hawaii Plays Old Hawaii. So it had my, me, my twin brother, and my cousin, who who uh, named Dennis Pobaw, that was singing all this high falsetto. Okay. At the time, at the time, I think I only sang two songs because. I was more the guitar player, and I was more uh, singing harmony. Okay. I love the harmony, tri a triple harmony. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Dennis used to sing the high falsetto. My my brother used to sing the alto, and I used to sing the. Yeah. What um, what inspired you three to start the group? Listening to my dad, then we we, yeah. grew, we all grew up in Kalapana. Yeah, as we were young, we that's all we hear every day, and listening them sing so. My mom had all the song books and she was singing all the words and we were there just, you hear that every day and you get so used to, to hearing that and then you start just singing without playing, we just sing along with them and it starts from there. Now the, the group Hui Ohana is, is credited as being part of a, the resurgence of traditional Hawaiian music and culture mm -hmm. in the 70s. What was your connection to that movement or your interest in it? Um, my connection to Hui Ohana? No, to, to the movement, the resurgence of traditional Hawaiian music and culture and language that was, that was part of that whole cultural movement. And the group is often credited as being part of that, but I'm wondering, was that, your in, was that part of your interest in forming the group or did, because you did the Young Hawaii Sings Old Hawaii? Oh, no, no. Well, I, I guess from the time we grew up, it was, it was so natural that was we, we always played music. And my cousin used to live not too far from, we could walk down the road. And, okay. and, and every time, every place, in Kalapan, from the first house to the last house, everybody plays the music. Okay. Everybody, uh, all the family, they all have their own. And then the further in Kalapan you go, the better the music is. Okay. You know, we come from the last house. <laughs> 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 I just took. I'm sure you're not. <laughs> not <joking>. a humor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah but, but you know, we were young, and then so we just continued the tradition. We just carried on. Okay. And then, uh, you know, th that time um, I didn't know. I never had. The idea that I was going to be an entertainer today, not you know, it wasn't in my mind what I was going to do. Did, didn't even know until until um, we started playing music and because back in those days when you play music, nobody got paid playing music. Mm -hmm. You know, we used to play parties. My mom, mom and dad, we we call that kukua. Kukua means free. So we used to go to parties. Every family goes and they play music. Nobody get paid. We just have a nice time. And finally, we played and we got money involved. They was getting really interested to us. So, and they, you know, the money plus we were, they were, we were traveling all over the place without paying for our, you know, tickets to fly here. So we got used to that. To that and as the years went on, I, I be, became one of the things that I love to do. Mm -hmm. And today, I'm, that's where I am today, they said, sharing this music. And whatever kind of stories I can share. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to go back to, to Slack. Um, Key a little bit. Yeah. So, what for you? What defines slack key? Um, what defines slack key? What defines slack key? Um, to me, when, when I first heard slack key, my dad and um, it's it just the style and just how the the thing grabs you. As growing up, I mean, you hear this music and and then it, it makes you feel good inside. Especially some some of us us. When we're sick, we hear this music, and it kind of heals. The music heals. So we just felt, I just fell in love, and the more I hear it, the more I want to do it. So, so it's not necessarily a set of tunings, or it, it's, it's part of how you grew yeah, up. Yeah, it's, it's grew up and, yeah. and, and, and learn how to play with, from within. Like We always play from within. So when I play that, that style of music, mm -hmm. the reason why I like it, because Slacky, you, you, it comes from here, and it, to me, it's no stress. No, you, the more you play, the more better you feel, and 
and it's open to all the feelings that you know you uh, how can I say it? Anyway, it comes from the heart. <laughs> that's, it comes from inside, yeah. That's a good enough definition for and, me. No, but and then because of this music, the way what it does to people, you know, I, I go into the hospital, see patients like that, and I pray for them, and I see tears come out of the eye. I see them, you know, like they're so happy. And set some shows that I did traveling on the road, there's people on the wheelchair that comes inside, and people that have to do um, uh, uh, dialysis. There's one lady that came in there and she said, you know, sir, I, I was supposed to go out to dialysis today, but I'm so glad I came here. I said, why? She says, I feel more better than going to dialysis. So it just makes me feel good inside. And I just say mahalo to the Lord above. Mm -hmm. We call him Keakua. Yeah. So I noticed in your playing earlier today, a lot of influences of, of other styles of music too. Yes, yes. A lot of jazz phrasings of the chords and, <laughs> and a little bit of blues thrown in there. So it seems to me like Slacky is also open to um, in, inclusion of other I guess, sounds. I guess for me, um, because I love all the other type of music besides Hawaiian music, mm -hmm. I just love it. And so when I play my guitar, it, it just comes natural, you know. Like um, like I always say, I can do that one song ten times, and the same one song ten times would sound different because it's it's a lot of feelings. So it's feelings from inside that comes out into my guitar. Um, we sometimes I get surprised, like oh, something new, you know. Like I mean, it just comes, you know. Where where it's not, I'm not reading. I have to read the the song sheet, and it's going to be the same over and over. So that's why, that's why I love Slacky. That's what it does to me. That's what it does uh, make me play more and just enjoy. And I've been just, just enjoying this all my life. So how do you teach that? Because um, <laughs> you teach, do you teach Slacky now? Yeah, I do, but that's the hardest part for me, you know, teaching. I mean, I can't teach. It would take forever. And uh, um, so what I tell the people is to bring their... Um, you know the cell phone or camera to video what I'm doing, but before they do that, I said I play the song for, for you. Right? So I play the, the simple and I play it real slow. And I, if if I do a song, I say okay, let me show this, show them this song. And this song would be Slacky Lullaby, and the song goes like this. So I go, so I play it slow for them. I go. So I thought that's part one, and then part two would go like this. So I do it as slow as I can, and then and then and then listen so so that they, I can get them familiarized with the melody. Mm -hmm. I say listen how the melody go, and I say and it's only two keys. It's just back and forth G. D7, G, D7, and that's all it is. And I said, you listen to how the, the melody go. So I said, okay, now you take your, your camera and I play the whole song for them. After the whole song is done, then I take part from one mm -hmm. to two, uh, until the, and by the, before, before the end of the class, they're playing the song. And then and if, they, if they're not all there, they got it on the video where they can go home and see the rest because it's not on the paper. And the good thing about it was when they got it, they said, Mr. Kapan, I said, yes. Oh, we got it. Yeah. Let me hear. And I heard it. And I said, oh, good job. Let me see. They gave me the guitar. So I play, I play the song again. And they look at me and they said, Mr. Kapan, I said, yes. They go, you didn't teach out that part. So I, you know, <laughs> and so I tell them, well, I have to save some for me. <laughs> <laughs> so if someone watches that video and practices for 40 years, then they can be okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. so that's the way I teach. If not, I mean, if not, I mean, when I first started teaching, was was real stressful for me because I, I, I don't write nothing down because mm -hmm. I don't know how to write down, but I just know how to play it. You know, like, that's why I told, you know, all those teachers that teach, I try to go to the class. I, I ask them, can I come to your class? Mm -hmm. They say, no. Huh? They don't want me to come to the class. They say, well, you know, they tell me, why, why do you want to come to the class? I said, 
Well, I just want to see how you teach the student. Uh, that's all I want to know. Mm -hmm. And they tell me, you just teach them the way you learn. And I say, really? And there's a gentleman back in Hawaii. He's, he's an icon too. His name is uh, Azik Otani. Mm -hmm. So I asked Azik, Azik said, no, Led, you teach them the way you learn. That's the best way. I said, why? He said, because it's from here. And I'll tell you, ever since that time, um, I teach them like that, and they love it. I said, you guys want, I said, I can't, I can't have somebody write the tab out. Oh, no, 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 we don't want the tab. We just want to play the way you play. I said, okay. Then that's when I do the video and help them, yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you finding that um, there's young players who are wanting to learn slack key? Um, there's there's quite a few back now, you know, a new generation. Yeah, they're coming up and and they're playing slacky. The reason why because they watch because from uh, from Huyohana, mm -hmm. the generation they they they, they learn from there. Because, you know, first time they ever heard three guys, you know, singing all this high music, three part harmony, and they hear all this music going on. Um, we just inspired all the next generation, and it started from there until today. So all these young ones. Once in a while, they, they go on and do their own, you know, reggae music or whatever they love, but they always come back to the tradition and carry on the music. So. Is, is there one person who's credited with establishing Slack Key as, a, as an approach to music? As one person? Is there, yeah, is there a story about the first Slack Key player? The only guy I would know would be um, Gabby Paino. Okay, yeah, that's the name yeah, of that. Yeah, 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 Gabby Paino, that's the only one. I mean, as I was growing up, uh, you know, I, I, I was one of my inspiration, Gabby, mm -hmm. all, all the one before me, Sonny Chilis word, mm -hmm. you know, Ray Kanye, all them, I was inspired by them. But that's, yeah, Gabby was uh, the one that I know who, yeah, people, people that know him until today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you also teach ukulele? Or, or just guitar? Ukulele too. Yeah? The same way, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I love ukulele, you know. So are there, there are techniques in playing that can go between guitar and ukulele? Um, like with your fingering or well, your... My, my, you know, I play my ukulele the same way as I play my guitar. Okay. The only difference about the guitar, I got two strings more. But, you know, all the fingerings, they're all the same. I play, I, I like... When I look at the fingerboard, I know it, I just know where everything is. Okay. Same like the ukulele. Only only thing, there's uh, on ukulele we, we have only four strings. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I hit each string two more times. <laughs> <laughs> to make up. For the <laughs> <laughs> some, I'm just joking. Some, mu some musical mathematics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just have fun with it. <laughs> yeah. Now when you're going to. Um, <laughs> compose a song or arrange another song yeah. maybe for a recording or how do you choose whether you're going to do it on ukulele or guitar um or do you choose does the instrument just tell you which one to um no i just think about it you know i, I sit down and well sometimes i don't think i just playing the song and and, and it comes you know like on, on stage especially on stage when i'm playing live in front of everybody all these things just out of the blue sky just comes and even some guitar players look at me and says, where did you get that from? I say, it just comes. It, it, it reminds me of when when I was going to school, I used to be in a, in a band. Mm -hmm. I used to read all these notes, all these charts. I, I used to, you know, play with the, in, with the class in band and the band teacher is going, you know, reading. I play my horn and next thing I hear, I hear these notes in my head. I look at the song, hear the notes and I play it. I just played on... And the band teacher stops the whole class, stops up. He looks at me, he goes, Mr. Kalpana. I say, yes. He goes, what's that note on your music sheet? And I go, it's not there. <laughs> 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 and he goes, play the note on the sheet. Okay. So <laughs> I play the note and I hear again. I hear some other notes. And so, I, I, so I keep on like, creating. I keep, after the class is over, he said, okay, everybody, you go. Mr. Kalpana, you want to stay back? I said, oh, I'm going to get it. I stay back and he walks up to me and he goes, Mr. Kabana? I say, yes. He says, where do you get the notes? I said, well, you know, I just, it's just come like here in my head and I just play it. And he goes, you know what that is? I said, nope. He said, 
just gift it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. After that, that, that's why I did you read notes. I just play, and then he goes like that. He smiles. Everybody got music sheet. They said me. I just got to stand. Seems like you've been able to take that pretty far. Yeah. <laughs> I just got a black stand still. <laughs> um, so, so what can you tell me about Just Press? Just Press. Okay, Just Press is um, Just Press is my uncle's uh, because they don't read notes in Kalapana. He always pressing on his guitar. So instead of when I ask him what what key he's doing, and he looks at me. He don't he don't know what key. He just looks at me and tells me, just press. I say what? Yes, just press. So I start pressing, and he looks at me and he tells me, press the right key. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there is some learning that has to happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so that's why that's where Jess Press came from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so is that is that an approach that you uh, you, you use on in your own playing? Yeah, yeah. There's yeah, there's, there's a song like there's a song I do. It's called well, it's called Twelve Street Rag and Sweet Georgia Brown. Mm -hmm. But we call it Jess Press. And I mean, I'm overhanding the guitar. I play on, on, on the guitar on the top. You know, bells and everything, and running my fingers down like that. It, we call it Jess Press. Can you, can you demonstrate that for us? No. <laughs> no, the reason why, the, the song is, you, you have to have a, um, you have to have a, a company. Oh, okay. Because without, without, without the rhythm in the back, yeah. it doesn't come out. Yeah. It doesn't work. Yeah. But, you know, like playing bells on top, like m my dad used to play in Maui Chimes. So. Now the, the the technique of the bells or the chimes. The chimes, yeah. Is that um, is that something you learned growing up? Young? Yes. Yeah, okay, so you would watch people do that. I also watch my dad do that. Okay. That's why I learned that song from my dad. Are, are there other other techniques that you've developed later on in your career by continuing to just, uh, just press? <laughs> yeah. Um, because I noticed when you were playing yeah. on stage, you were doing a lot of muting of the string. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, I, that's what picking, I created. Picking near the I created, bridge. You, yeah. Or, or if, I, if I mute, I go, wait. So I'm just. Um, in the mm -hmm. string like this, muffling in the string, yeah, stuff like that, yeah. And is that common in slack key in general? Not, no, not, not doing my my dad. Um, I think my uncle Fred used to do a little of that. Mm -hmm. That's why I think that's why I pick it up, yeah. Okay. But I do it in how however I feel in certain songs. If I think it's the right one to do, I, I just put that in. You'll, you'll I just yeah, I just throw it in, yeah. <laughs> and hopefully it works. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think the evidence indicates yeah. it does. <laughs> um, you've also played with players in a bunch of different styles. Um, yes. You know, people from... I did, um, I think, 1992. It was called Masters of the Steel Strings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was um, Jerry Douglas, Tal Farlow, the jazz guitar player, Wayne Henderson, um, uh, quite a few people. Oh, Rockabilly, uh, Albert Lee, he was there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, then, and we traveled all, all over, all over the United States. 
Did you uh, did you pick up any techniques from them, or were you just teaching them? No, no, we we, we all you know sit down and like Hawaiians we call it kani kapila, or we just jam and okay. and we, and everybody just um, having fun watching different. You know, we all have our, our own style, mm -hmm. and to sit down and play and we just giggle like, oh wow, and then you know like uh, Ray Flack. I remember Ray Flack. You know, he he goes on the stage, first time I see him and. The stage is all dark, and all you see is this uh, spotlight on his back, and his, his back facing the. And somebody goes, "There's Ray Flack." He turns around and he goes like, and all this dust, you know. And he goes like, Pah, and more dust, and then he starts, you know. And <laughs> I say, "Wow, man!" I just feel like, "Oh man, I I have to follow him. I'm the next guy." I said, "Oh man, that's a hard act." I said, "But you know." Uh, let me tune this guitar and show you what I do. Because I ha since I, I had to follow him, I said, I gotta get some, something down, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I did this song called, my uncle taught me this song. It's called the Mauna Loa, Mauna Loa Slacky. And it, and he overhands the guitar like this, and he says, um, the song tells a story of how the Hawaiians used to mix poi. You know, he said, I used to tell a story, all you have to do is watch the hand. You know, you never leave the, uh, you know, oh, watch the fingers, you never leave the hand. So, <laughs> and the song goes like this. So I did the song right after him. Since I had to go on there, I said, oh, I got to do the song. So when I did the song, and in my pocket, I had this uh, battery uh, fan. You know, I got an airplane that turned on the fan. And, oh, it's so hot in airplanes. <laughs> so I got this fan, huh? I take the fan out, and uh, people all clap, yeah, yeah. And then after the song's done, I take, it down, I take the fan out, I go like this. I, uh, you know my fingers? <laughs> <laughs> they were <laughs> clapping. So I walk back in the back into the dressing room, and he Ray Flack, he's, he's back there, and he looks at me, he goes, Gee, I like your act. I tell him, I like yours too. <laughs> we, got, we had good fun after that. We started sharing music, and we just having, having a ball in the back there. Yeah, that sounds pretty fun. <laughs> then, yeah, we have, oh, well, that's fun. Then we get, I, get, I got to know all of them so good. I mean, I'm... I'm I learned so, so much from them about, you know, getting real professional on stage and, and, and you know, and complimenting one another. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. And then, um, so that was a tour. That was a tour, yeah. And you've also done recordings with other, in, with other people from other styles as well, Have, haven't you? Yeah, Eric Gibbs. Yeah. Yeah, Eric Gibbs is one album. I played with him. Um, quite a few. And so, as you're as you're exploring all these styles, do you do you feel like you're continuing to learn and expand your own oh, approach yeah. uh, to? Oh uh, yeah, totally. I'm still learning, you know. Uh, um, but one thing, one, one thing about playing with any other artist, you know, I, I play with all kind, all kind of music. Um, I'm not afraid to play with anybody because. I learned one thing, you gotta pay attention. The ears is the most, to me, is the most important. So I'm listening to what they're doing. You know, like when when we go out and do festivals, especially when we stay at the hotel, you get all these bluegrass players, uh, country western, they're all in the lobby playing, I'm walking around. and So I just pick a band and I say, hey, can I join you guys? They say, yeah, sure, come in. So I jump in with the bluegrass guys. They, they're playing and while they're playing, I hear I hear how the music going, and I'm ready in the back of them. You know, they, they don't tell me, oh, we're in the queue, gee, we're in the queue. Hey, as soon as I hear that, I find and I'm ready behind them playing, and they look at me like, wow, because they hear this Hawaiian flavor mixing up with the bluegrass. 
<laughs> so they tell me, you want to take one? Yes. So, so I take a lead. I take it for them. They look at me and they go, oh, take another one. Sure, take another one. Then, and then it, go, it goes around, right? Everybody takes one. Mm -hmm. So it goes to the next guy. He says, oh, it's your turn. The guy says, uh-uh, not after this guy. <laughs> I said, that's all. You know, we all have fun. But, and then they, they tell me, how do you learn how to play? I said, well, I just listen. I said, I just, um, I, I don't even know, know the music they're playing, but because I, I, I listen you know, with my good ears, I just listen and I'm right there with them, just having fun. Yeah, and get a come from inside. Always, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I get really pay attention and just, like I always say, the ears gotta be good listening to what's happening. Yeah. If not, if you don't listen good, you, you know, you, you are gonna be all over the place instead of paying attention. Like back home, I always tell them when I used to play the group, uh, uh, you know, we always call up guest artists to come on stage. So I always tell them, hey, when somebody come on the stage, you gotta pay attention, you know, pay attention to what they're doing, huh? You know. They tell me, yeah. I said, yeah, because if you think you know the song, you don't know the song because they're going to do the same song, you know, but everybody got their own style. Mm. So you got to listen to the beat, how they sing them. Because it happened. And after I told them, no, the guy came, he sang the same song. This guy, you know, himself, he paying attention. You know, he know the song, so he plays the song. Next thing I know, the guy not even over there, and this guy is changing key on. I said, See, I told you, you gotta pay attention. The guy don't sing it like you. He sings his way. So you gotta pay attention to whoever comes on the stage. <laughs> like me, if I go on stage, I play somebody, I gotta pay attention to what he's doing so I can I'll be right behind him, mm -hmm. complimenting him. Yeah. So it seems like, to me, part of, I mean, part of the stories you've been telling about growing up with such music around you and, and the, the tradition of slack key is something that is flexible Mm -hmm. and yeah. So you're continuing it by exploring it and expanding it. And expanding, yeah, and, yeah, and, and, and sharing it, though. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And uh, um, besides, um, uh, Slacky, I do standard tuning too. I love the <laughs> stand. I love standard tuning because the standard tuning, you can play anything. You know, uh, I'm all over the guitar. I'm um, with the Slacky. You're limited only to certain. So the the reason why I play Slacky is uh, I'm playing solo. Mm -hmm. By myself, mm -hmm. so I have I, I try to make the music full when I'm singing, playing. Okay. So, so that way it sounds like there's somebody in the back helping you playing. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you so you sound full. So that's why uh, that's why I always play slacky. But if I play with a group, I turn it up to. Uh, and when I used to play with George Winston, so when I turn my guitar up to standard, he says, George says, "Oh no." It's kick ass time. <laughs> <laughs> he knows, he just knows, you know, and when I, he says, oh, he's gonna, go. yeah, because there's no limit, you know, understand it? Mm -hmm. To me, no limit. You just do anything you wanna do on it. And I just, it's, I mean, you got everything. I can play any kind on, the, on this. I can do it on, I can do it on a uh, slacky tuning, but the slacky tuning, you have to work a little h harder than the standard tuning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the standard tuning, I love standard tuning. So when, when you were growing up, were people switching back and forth between slack key tunings and standard tunings yeah. and those month-long parties and <laughs> the musical environment? Or, were you, or did you learn slack key tuning initially? Well, uh, I learned slack key first from my dad. Okay. My, my, dad is, my dad and my uncles, they, they all play standard. Okay. And my dad played uh, guitar, he played saxophone, piano, uh, violin, auto harp, ukulele, you know, banjo, they all, they all, they all play that. You know, and then so I I played learning slacky for my dad. My mom taught me how to play standard tuning. She told me you have to learn how to play the standard tuning. Yeah, I glad I remember. And the first standard tuning was the key of C, and I was so small, so I had to stress. And you know, I said, oh, she said you gotta keep on practicing. So I kept kept on practicing mm -hmm. until your fingers get used to. And then my uncle told me you have to use pick. You know, because in California we don't have no electricity, mm -hmm. so nobody can hear your guitar. So I, I, I started learning how to play pick before I could play, uh, play without pick. Now I play with picks, I cannot play without picks. I don't have the pick, I, I can't even play the guitar. I mean, my fingers are all tangled up but with the picks. And with one thing with the pick, you, the note is clear, you can hear it. Mm -hmm. you can, I can go loud, I can go soft uh, in between, you know, when there's no electric, you know. So that's why when I play with guys with acoustic, they're, they're playing without picks. 
my guitar is louder than them. So when when come to their turn to play the the, the lead, I I just back up on my on my picking. I just go soft, you know. Like if I'm picking loud, like it's, if I'm picking loud, I go. <laughs> And if I bring it down, I'll go. So I just kind of lighten up on, on the picks. It's your volume control. Uh, volume control, yeah. And then, yeah. And then so that they can hear his guitar, because he don't he doesn't have a pick. Mm -hmm. Do you play electric guitar also? Oh, I love it. Actually, I, I got a 335. <laughs> <laughs> you have to bring that along. The 335 gives it. I love it, yeah. I, I, got, I, got, I got Songbird electric, yeah. Oh, yeah. If on um, um, electric, it's so easy, like playing like playing the electric tie brado. What kind of stuff do you like to play on your electric? Uh, pipeline. Pipeline. We <laughs> ran across a video of you playing pipeline <laughs> well, with well, riders on, on ghost the riders. Yeah, yeah, and all that. Yeah, I do that. <laughs> I do. That, yeah. Well, well, with Huyohana, we were playing all electric. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I had a 335, my cousin had a 350 uh, Gibson, and uh, my brother, but he's playing bass, so. Yeah, it was all electric. Even in the slacky, we paint, I was playing electric. And then, because I, because I started playing a solo, so I ended up playing acoustic. So, you know, good for the slacky, you know, acoustic, the guitar, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, uh, but I do miss the electric, though. I love playing. Electric. <laughs> so, so your solo career? Yeah. You've been you've been solo for um, some time now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I've been solo since 1989. 19, yeah, 1989 when I when I first came up for the for the Smithsonian playing on the mall okay. with Uncle Ray Connie mm -hmm. and Auntie Genoki Albi. All the, all of us came up. I started from there, and then from there, I, w I went solo the first time in my life. From here, they flew me all the way out to Nashville to play, and Uncle Ray went to Atlanta. So we were separated. And I said, oh, man, I don't know what to, you know, first time to Nashville, I don't know what I'm going to play. Mm -hmm. So I go in the hotel, and, and I start practicing on Sweet Lila Honey. I did all these English songs. Um, beyond the reef, you know, <laughs> song that I don't do back home. But I said, oh, because I'm, I, I want to make sure that people understand. When instead of singing the Hawaiian music, I sing that. But when I went to the club and and, and play, they were asking for me for all the, all the songs that I threw out out of my repertoire. I threw it out and tried to bring out the pearly shells and all that. That went out after because they said, how about singing Ikona without the trio? So when they said that, I knew they came to Hawaii. And some other, other ones said, hey, how about playing Kaimana Hila? You know, they, they mentioned all these Hawaiian songs. Mm -hmm. I fell right in the groove and then I started playing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So from that time, I, I was in, that was my first solo gig. So from that time on, I wasn't afraid after that. So I started playing all this music and continue, continue to play. Every day, I, what I, if I, you know, I found out the more you play the guitar, the more you find things on the guitar. There's never an ending, you know. I keep on playing and I find all this stuff and I get so surprised. Like, oh, I kind of school myself, like, you know, all the years I lost out. With Hui Hana, you know, back home, there's entertainers that they only, you know, they go, they play when they work. You know, after, after the job's done, the guitar goes in the case, don't come out until the next gig. Mm -hmm. I used to do that. And then after that, I started bringing the guitar out and I started playing. This all got better and better because I could, I could hear all the stuff, that, you know, all the fingering and all the changes. So I was telling my wife, "Man, I should have done this a long time." She looked at me, she shook her head. I, I told you how many times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I learned something, mm -hmm. and I said, "You know what? Every time I grab my guitar and I play, I, I always find something out of there, and and I know there's more than what there is. You know, there's many more. You just get look for it. It's always it's there. You know, yeah." So I, I just work on it. I just um, love to play now, you know. Every, every chance I get, I'm, I'm in my garage. You know, I'm, I'm going. I, you know, I'm live on Facebook. Or I, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> now you, you, so you've played all over the world. Yes. You, yes. 
Do you have a, a, a favorite place that you've played? Um, or some place you haven't played that you want to get to? Uh, no. I just, I guess I just love traveling and I'm meeting new people and then, you know, the next thing you know, when I'm back in Hawaii, they, they always, they come and say, hey, remember me? You know, you came here. And I say, oh, yes, yes, yes. But sometimes I don't remember, you know, I mean, so many places I've been going, yeah. Yeah. But, you have a list of, of <laughs> places you've played. Is I went to Paris. I went to Paris. I went to Japan. I went to Germany. Um, I, w I went all over the United States. Just and people are always and wanting to hear the Hawaiian. Yeah, repertoire. yeah. And every place I went, there was always Hawaiian music. Yeah, you know. And, and they always say, "Oh man, you take me. You bring back so many memories. You know, you take me back to our younger days." And mm. I said, "Oh, thank you, man. I feel, I feel great inside. Thank you so much. I mean, to me, it's a blessing." And I always say, "Mahalo keakua," you know, the Lord above. Or, for all these blessings to go open up my heart and go out and share this with the world and you know bring it home and next thing you know you got all these fans from all over the place you know and today it's more like on Facebook and you know always you get so many friends and they can see you and and some of them that come to Hawaii you know new guys that that I didn't even meet you know families like that they come to the show and they said oh hi Mr. Kalpana you don't know us but we know you to YouTube, you watch it on YouTube. Want to see? So they come to the show and they see, and they go, you know, man, you're better than YouTube. I mean, you see, on YouTube is okay, but when you when they see me live, it's another different whole ball. You know, like mm -hmm. wow, they they seen what's happening, what I'm doing on my guitar, and they're right in front, and and it's like overwhelmed. And you mind? I don't know. You mind the video? I said you can. Anybody can read. I don't. You know, I don't. I just love to share. You know, let the world. You know. Mm -hmm. I always tell myself, I'm not going to leave forever. So, you know, then just give it. <laughs> I share it all. Yeah. I share it all. Make everybody happy. Yeah. If they're happy, I'm happy. That's good. Yeah. It's good generosity. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. Um, well, I want to thank you. Thank you, sir. For doing sir. this interview and for thank entertaining us today. Thank you, Don. It's been very wonderful learning. Thank you. Mahalo. Thank you. Mahalo. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.